Hi and welcome to my my little tiny shop. And today it's a beautiful day today and I was thinking that you know there's a bunch of different things that I've been meaning to get to um, that I want to take care of so maybe you guys can kind of hang out with me as I do them. <laughs> Last time I had you guys in here I was working on this tool wall and I just have to say after living with it for um, a little while now I am so so happy with this. I'm so glad I did this. I should have done this a long time ago. The only thing I think is when you kind of fill a space up there's not a whole lot of room for additional things. So like there's a couple more things that I've been wanting to put on and I'm like hmm, I think I need to make another tool wall. I, I, I'm kind of thinking maybe this space right here. I'm thinking like some leather tools, some sewing stuff, some other miscellaneous woodworking stuff that didn't fit on here. So I might have to you know do another one. Because I really don't want to mess with it, it's so pretty. Oh, you're a good puppy. So one thing that's on my list of to-dos is this bag. I don't know if some of you guys might remember this. I made this bag a couple of years ago. Um, it was kind of a big project, it used a lot of leather. And, and I love this bag. It's been a really great bag. I think it has like the perfect combination of adventure and travel. However, uh, there's a couple of things that have kind of... Um, as you can see, it has come apart a little bit uh, right here, right here, but that's a pretty easy fix. Now the biggest kind of issue, the closure, while it works, it flop up way too easily. When I first made this, I was just like so kind of caught up in the idea of using all leather because I never had a bag like that. They're so expensive and I, I thought that would be really cool. This kind of leather anyway, it's pretty thick. It's what I had on hand and the whole bag is quite heavy. I mean, it's heavy without anything inside of it. One of the things that I like the most about being a maker, which is kind of like a term that I both kind of like and dislike, is the fact that when something breaks, you can fix it. Uh, but the fact, uh, at least in my experience, is if it's something that you made yourself, you feel a lot more comfortable fixing it than if it's something that you bought. Um, I don't know, because it's like you have ownership over it in a different way. So I found a piece of scrap leather that I think is actually from the same hide, but I'm not completely sure. I'd say that's pretty good. Casualty. <laughs> Main thing, you don't want blood everywhere. I feel pretty good about this. Basically, I added this and I fixed some parts that were broken. I hope this is gonna help so it doesn't just like open up the whole bag as easily. I think this is gonna be a big improvement. All ready to go out, to go out hiking, right? You know, let's go out and cut some wood. A while ago we had a tree fall down, it was, it's kind of thick, but it's a cherry tree and I've been wanting to bring some wet wood in here so I can do some carving. It's a bit of a hike. You know, I think we better lock up. There's a tree right here. It's diseased, but um, I'm hoping there are some good parts to it. Okay, not bad, right? I mean, there's some damage right inside here. Oh, too bad we have a long hike to get back now to the shop. It's right there. <laughs> you know, I think my lock is stuck. Not the saw. I have this is three in one lock dry lube. This penetrates and lubricates. Let's, in. Let's take this off. Dries in seconds. Ah! You know what? I might have over exaggerated just the touch with that lock to prove a point. It wasn't actually that stuck. But you know what lock is? This one. This is a little deadbolt um, and this is stuck. This I've tried to uh, to open and you know for it won't do it. Maybe, a, maybe another second. Moment of truth. There you go. So pick up a can of 3-in-1 lock dry lube if you have a lock that won't open. 
This is a big improvement. These Sam Brown buttons, I love and I hate at the same time. I just went saving wood from the fire pit. We've been working on kind of a, a fun project that I'm gonna share more about later. And I go to the fire pit and Matt, I just thrown out a bunch of scraps. That was like, I wanna save all this stuff. Um, oh yeah, look at here. Any of you guys have a thing where you're like, that's something that I want in my life? Well, I always wanted a bonsai tree in my life. And uh, I don't know, like I have all of these like different pieces of different wood in uh, different types of species and I don't know, I want to do something with it all. Um, but more importantly, this right here I want to start taking apart and play with. So there, there are certainly some bugs in here, like some eggs. The other thing that I'm, I'm halfway tempted of is to cut the piece off and make like a little hook with this. I think that could be kind of fun. I kind of think maybe I should just like saw this down here. I have an announcement to make. Well, maybe this intro gave it away, but today is pre-order day launch for our new product. And what is it? It is a set of premium gorgeous screwdrivers, both Phillips and flathead screwdrivers. Um, but let me back it up for a second because I have been thinking for, for a long time that um, what I really want to include in my tool collection is a set of really nice screwdrivers. They have to have the right feel, they have to be made out of hardwood, um, they have to be comfortable to use, they have to look really, really nice, and they're hard to find. And that got me thinking that, you know what, maybe that is a product that we could make here in the shop. Maybe we could create this set of premium screwdrivers. So for the past month or month and a half, actually longer than that, we have been in testing mode. We have been testing, cutting, designing, going through so much wood, different techniques, different styles, different ways of construction in order to uh, bring forth this product. And I can really say now that I am so happy with the result. It has a beautiful hardwood handle. Um, this is mesquite, but the hardwoods are going to vary. Uh, so when you order it, it's going to be kind of a surprise. They're all going to be beautiful. They're all going to be hardwoods. And they're going to have this, this basic design, which is a London style handle, which is my favorite because it has this kind of oct octagonal shape, which makes it really comfortable. It doesn't slip in your hand. Um, so it's really nice from that point of view. Um, it has a copper ferrule, it has either a flat head or a Phillips head, and it has a Darwin Orver engraving on it as well. And I finished all of these with my beeswax polish before shipping out. Um, so that, that's what this is. So a, a really nice screwdriver set that you can either, you know, put up your tool wall, put in your tool bag, uh, or just keep and use forever. And in terms of purchasing, there are two options. Um, you can either buy the set. Um, in which case they come in this custom-made gift box that we've also been working on and making the screwdrivers fit just perfectly inside the box. So this makes a really nice gift um, if you're looking for Christmas or you know something like that coming up. Uh, and the other option is to buy one. Maybe you only want a Phillips or a flathead um, and in that case it comes in a fabric pouch that um, I'm also going to start making here now. So those are the options in terms of purchasing. So we're opening it up for pre-order now and it's going to ship out on or before November 15th. So perfect in time for the holidays. And the catch is we're only making 100 of these. We're making 100 screwdrivers, so it's a limited edition production set. We're going to go into production mode now in the next month or so and just really focus on making these screwdrivers and making them as, as well and as perfectly as we can. Of course, there's going to be slight variations because that's just the nature of, of working uh, with this kind of product. But this is the general 
design and style. So if you would like one of these a limited edition sets, uh, if you want to support the channel, if you just like one of these in your tool collection, then head to darbenorver.com and I'll put a link in the description too and that's where you'll find more information about all of this. When I came into the shop this morning, a log is just sitting there looking at me. Excuse me, Darwin. I haven't seen any bugs since I tried to remove them. Like every time I do this kind of stuff, I'm really excited initially. <laughs> And then, you know, a little bit in, I'm like, is it really worth it? Okay. Well, actually, this wood is looking not too bad. I'm gonna try to sew down this way a bit more. This might be when you'd say, hey, Lynn, maybe if you had a bandsaw, this would go a little faster. And I'd say, I do have a pencil, but I kind of want to do this by hand. But this, this is taking a little while. <laughs> Another thing I was just thinking about how is how much I love making videos. Because if I wasn't making a video right now, I would be so tempted to say, screw this, this is taking too long. I don't think it's worth it. But now I'm like, God damn it, I'm going to finish this thing. <laughs> I was thinking about um, if I was starting from scratch, uh, the one thing I think I would miss more than anything if I didn't have it is a vise. Because without a vise, you're kind of lost for so many different things. And if you have a vise, you have another pair of hands and you're so much more able to do kind of different stuff. <laughs> Let's talk carving tools for a second. Now the main tools that I would use in this situation, a hatchet, Mura carving knife, maybe a hook knife, although uh, probably not for this project. But these are my three main carving tools. Anybody else finding it fascinating just how much Swedish companies are actually represented within the woodworking kind of craft world? I mean, other than Gränsforsbruk, I mean, there is also Hullsred, Mora Kniv, Sjöbergs workbenches, Kormek sharpening tools. I'm just, you know, saying names from the top of my head. Every time I see a Swedish company using their tools, I just feel kind of happy because I'm Swedish and it's kind of a, a thing. But anyway, love this one. It has a really good balance in it as well. Primarily what I love about these tools is how small and portable they are. Um, you can easily put this in your bag. Um, with along with a piece of wood or go out in the woods and find yourself a piece of wood and you don't need a lot of tools to do that This is definitely a slightly awkward shape warm. That's what you get with live wood Let's get you outside little guy The, one of the reasons why I, I just like doing this kind of thing is because it's so different from other type of woodworking, you know, when you have a plan and, you know, everything is very precise and you know what you're doing and you have to have a plan ahead of time or else, you know, it won't come out good. Whereas this is the direct opposite of that. 
feel like in order for this to look good, um, it needs to be shaped so much. I know what this is. This doesn't feel like a hook to me. This is not a hook. And then I was like putting it upside down and then I put it down and I was like, hmm, it's kind of a nice stand. I'm thinking about is whether I should make a ledge and carve it in or is that like stupid? Does it need a ledge? Be good. And then if I'm sitting down talking to someone, it's kind of weird. I would not have thought that um, this little contraption, like at that. And okay, what if I want to watch something this way? And that works too. And like when this is dry, I think I'm going to add like some leather here and a little piece of leather there um, so that it doesn't slide as easily. I think that could be a good idea. First I was just gonna leave this as is, but then I was thinking that's kind of lazy. And you know, you go through all the trouble to make something, you should really take it to its farthest point, right? Uh, so I'm gonna be carving out a little holder and maybe even a little slip so that you could put a rechargeable cord in. Um, and I, I'm already, I'm, I'm loving it even more because I think I feel like it adds like more definition and it's just like, just really cool. This is so unlike something I would normally make, which makes it kind of fun and appealing. I, I don't know, it looks like this guy's got little feet and I kind of love it. <laughs> oh wow, that was kind of fun. Love the idea of filling my home with the quirky little odd objects that, uh, I don't know, have a bit of a story to them and that are unlike anything else that you're gonna find out there. And if someone came upon them, they wouldn't quite know what to make out of it. That was kind of my relaxing, um, kind of playful uh, time to do that. But don't forget, we also have pre-orders for the most beautiful screwdrivers. Um, if this is something that you feel is missing from your life, certainly missing from my life, um, then go and check it out. Um, I'm really happy to finally share this with you guys. I just love the way they came out. I love the design of them and the way they feel in your hand when you're using the screwdriver and the logo and like it just came together and it looks so nice. Um, so link is in the description to anything that I might have mentioned. Um, thanks for sticking with me. Um, hope you're doing well and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.